Hi, in this uh, lesson we're going to be learning about transformations, the different sorts of transformations. So you can see the objectives of this lesson are to identify transformations including translations, rotations, reflections, and dilations. The definition of a transformation, a transformation is when you change a geometric figure. So there's a number of things you can do to it. We're going to look at four types of transformations. One of them is called a translation a rotation, a reflection, and a dilation. So we'll get into all four of these and you'll see what they're all about. <clears throat> so figures can be reflected, rotated, or translated to create new figures. When we do this, we always have a starting image and an ending image. The beginning image is called the pre-image. So just remember that the prefix pre means before. So the pre-image is the before, and the image is, is the after. <clears throat> Here's a definition of the four different uh, types of translations that we're going to, or transformations that we're going to be doing. And again, you'll see pictures where they'll make more sense here pretty soon. A reflection is when there's a line that acts as a mirror. That's called the line of reflection. And we're going to flip the figure over the line. Except when we, in geometry, we always say we reflect it in the line. But you can think of you're going to flip it over the line. <clears throat> the translation, and that word kind of looks like transformation, but translation is sometimes called a slide. And so what happens is the image is mapped onto another image. So it'll, you'll get directions and it'll tell you that you're going to move it, you know, for example, three, three units to the right and two units down. So you slide it right or left or up or down. You'll see that it'll be movement on a graph. A rotation, like the name suggests, is you're going to take the figure and rotate it around a fixed point. So if you think about a, a spinner in a game that you're playing and how the center of the spinner would be the, the point, and you're going to spin it around that center point. And that center point is called the center of rotation. And then the last one is called a dilation. And a dilation is we're going, going to use a scale factor. And we're going to either enlarge the object or shrink the object. So we'll, we'll have a scale factor to make it a different size than the original figure. <clears throat> so another vocabulary word you need to know is isometry. An isometry is a transformation that preserves lengths angle measures, parallel lines, and distances between the points. When you do a reflection, you do get an isometry. So if you take a look at this picture, let's say that this uh, right side of the blue figure had a length of uh, 5 centimeters. After you flip this, after you reflect this over the line, the image on the other side the corresponding side is also going to have a length of 5 centimeters. So let's say the top side was 3 centimeters. After you reflect it, the resulting image also has a length of 3 centimeters. Okay, same thing with angles, angle measures. If this was, uh, for example, 80 degrees, then after we reflect it, the image is also going to have an angle with 80 degrees after you flip it over that line. Parallel lines remained parallel. So, for example, these two sides were parallel. After we flipped it, they were still parallel. And distances between points we already talked about. So reflections are isometries. <clears throat> Here's another example. Now this one, it doesn't look like it is an isometry because when we flipped it, uh, it, it has different lengths and, and different, uh, yeah, it's a different size. And so this isn't a real great example of, of an isometry. This would not be an isometry. A translation, if you remember earlier, I mentioned that translations are sometimes called slides. Every point is moved the same distance in the same direction. So in this example, you're going to see that the black is going to be the pre-image, which means the beginning, uh, the beginning figure. The red is going to be the image or the ending figure. 
and we're going to translate or slide this triangle 10 units to the left. So watch what happens. Okay, so you can see that we are going to be using graph paper and you're going to be making some pre-images and showing where the figure ends up after you do whatever transformation we're doing, in this case a translation. Here's another example of a translation. Uh, this is, is just kind of a, a goofy thing. It's a monkey and this monkey is going to show us how a translation works. Okay, so a translation is a slide. So remember the monkey in, in our uh, video showed you how to do a translation or a slide. Okay, the next one we're going to look at is a reflection. And we talked a little bit about reflections earlier. I gave you the definition. And when we talked about reflections, I said that you flip a, the original figure over a line. Okay, so in this case, the line that we're going to flip it over the line of symmetry is the y-axis. So if you watch this, we're going to take the pre-image, which again is the, the black triangle, and we're going to reflect it in the y-axis. Or in other words, we're going to reflect it over the y-axis. So here's an example. Okay, so if you see what happens, the sides that, <clears throat> that are uh, corresponding they end up the same distance from the reflection line uh, after you do the flip. And so that bottom corner ended up being, uh, it started out one unit to the right of the y-axis and it ended one unit to the left of the y-axis. The top corner of the triangle, that started out three units to the right of the y-axis and then in the image it ended up three units to the left. Okay, also another, uh, another uh, vocabulary term is a line of symmetry. Some figures already have a line of symmetry. And what a line of symmetry in a figure means is that if you were to do a, re a reflection over that line, it would end up looking like the original picture when it was done. So in this case, I like to use the example of a valentine. Uh, if you, you know, have ever folded a piece of paper and made a valentine out of it, the folding line, which would be right down here, is the line of symmetry of a valentine. So you can imagine if we were to reflect that valentine over that line of symmetry, the resulting picture would be the exact same picture. It would still look like a valentine. So some figures do have this line of symmetry that is already uh, part of what it is. Okay, here is a snake that is going to show us a reflection. Okay, so the snake in our video is going to demonstrate what happens with the reflection. Okay, so you can see that it just flipped. Okay, so there is no line of symmetry that showed, but but the uh, the reflecting line would have been you know a vertical line that was uh, kind of going right through the middle of the picture, and it reflected over that line. A rotation. This is the one where, as the name suggests, <clears throat> the figure is rotated around a single point. In this case, the point that it is rotating around is that, that bottom corner of the pre-image. Remember, the pre-image is going to be the black triangle on the right. So the bottom corner of that black triangle is the, uh, the point of rotation. That's where we're going to rotate from. And we're going to rotate this triangle counterclockwise in this case and now when you do these uh, when we we get into these a little more deeply you're going to be given a certain number of degrees that it's going to rotate either clockwise or, or counterclockwise so in this case I believe we're going to be rotating it about 90 degrees counterclockwise so watch the demonstration Okay, so that was a rotation. It went counterclockwise. And if you look at where the, some of the original lines were and where they ended up, 
you know, when the, the corresponding ones ended up, you can see that they make a 90 degree angle. And so that's why I say that we rotated it 90 degrees. Okay, the octopus is going to show us a demonstration of a rotation. Okay, so rotation is when there's a, a rotating point. In this case, with the octopus, it would have been probably in the center of the picture, and it just spun around that point. Okay, the last type of transformation we're going to look at is a dilation. And when you have a dilation, you're either going to enlarge the pre-image, or you're going to reduce it in size. Okay, so we're going to make it bigger or smaller. Uh, when this happens, usually there's a scale factor, which when we get into this deeper, we'll, we'll look at that. But if the black triangle is the pre-image, the red triangle is going to show what the image is or where it's going to end up if we do either an enlargement or a reduction. Okay, so watch the demonstration. So there's an enlargement, and that would be a reduction. Okay, so that is again called a dilation, and it can either get larger or smaller. It does stay the same shape, it just either blows up bigger or gets smaller. Okay, so this dragon is going to give us a demonstration of a dilation. It either enlarges or there's a reduction and it gets smaller. Okay, so hopefully this gave you a good idea of the different types of transformations. We looked at translations, which was a slide, rotations, which as the name suggests, you, you spin it around a point, reflections, which is when you flipped it over a line, and dilations, which is where we enlarged or reduced, made it larger or smaller. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask.